Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining us today for your online coffee break. Today, I'd like to welcome to our show my special guest, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D-Man from Death Wish Coffee. Death Wish Coffee is known as the world's strongest coffee, but it just made its first voyage into space for the astronauts on board the International Space Station. I was fortunate to meet the incredible Jeff at the recent SpaceX launch of CRS-15, the mission that carried Death Wish Coffee into orbit. Jeff and D-Man also host the Fueled by Death cast, an amazing podcast that stimulates your mind with fantastic guests and topics each week. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Hey, you. it's great to be here, Chuck. Well, I'm glad to have you. Now, I want a little background here. I understand Death Wish Coffee was started in uh, 2012, I think, by Mike Brown. Can you tell us a little bit more about how Mike came up with the idea to make the world's strongest coffee? Yeah, sure. Um, it started out, Mike was uh, the owner of a small coffee shop here in uh, Saratoga Springs, mm -hmm. and uh, his business wasn't going so well. So his idea was to come out with his own coffee line to add some revenue in. And uh, a lot of his customers were asking for a strong coffee. So he just kind of ended up developing this almost, almost it seems like by mistake. And right. it, it, it took off almost immediately. Um, I think the, the, the first big milestone was getting on Good Morning America. And uh, wow. after that, it's, it's, it's it was just insanity. The, the fun story about that is, is, is he started the coffee in the basement of Saratoga Coffee Traders. And uh, um, like Dustin said, uh, out of sheer will, it was put into the right hands and Good Morning America called and was like, we'd like to feature your coffee. And Mike said, that'd be great. When are you thinking? And they said, we'll be there in two hours. Okay. And <laughs> and so he had to scramble get everything together. They got the coffee, did a short piece on him. And the next morning it premiered on Good Morning America. And uh, at that point, I think he was fulfilling about five orders a day, maybe up to 15 for a good day. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into 8,000. And wow. uh, Death Wish Coffee was immediately kicked off of Amazon, kicked off of eBay, kicked off of most internet sites where we were selling our coffee because we couldn't fulfill it. Because it was literally Mike and Eric Donovan, and that was it, yeah. basically, as the, as the company. Yeah, people get mad when you sell a thing that you no longer have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of get booted. But, you know, now we're the, we're the number one selling coffee on Amazon. We have been for quite a while. Congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, we've gotten great accolades, such as, you know, we, we got that Super Bowl commercial, which was yeah, just tell amazing me, for tell us. Tell us a little bit more about that. Tell us about the Super okay. Bowl commercial. Okay, so we... we Join this competition, the big game small business competition yep. that Intuit puts on uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> pretty much every year where uh, 15,000 businesses uh, competed pretty much vote wise mm -hmm. to see who would win a commercial made by them and put on to Super Bowl 50. Yeah. Um, nice. It was a pretty tight race. And uh, after, you know, being in the top 10, then the top three. And we eventually won it. And it was it was surreal. It was surreal. And I, I actually had the, the fortune of starting with the company just before we learned that oh, really? we had won that commercial. Wow. Um, so I got to experience that from the beginning to now. It's it's just been a roller coaster ride of insanity and delicious coffee the whole way. See, I can't if imagine. You, oh, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you want to see that commercial, it does still exist on YouTube. Um, you can just type in uh, Death Wish Coffee um, Super Bowl commercial, and it'll come right up right from into it. Wow. See, I think it's amazing that you guys just had this incredible success story. And I imagine there were some growing pains when you went from – Oh, just a few to, uh, few loyal customers to overwhelming. How do you guys deal with that? Like, how fast do you grow? Well, we're constantly dealing with that. Yeah, we're constantly dealing with growing pains. I mean, just for example, the addition of sixteen hundred Walmart retail stores that we're in, and that happened wow. immediately. Like, how do you deal with that? And Mike's really good at relying on his team and finding smart people to put in the right places. And I think that's the number one method that he's dealt with this growth. But um, he's just very patient and very even keeled. And we've just been able to stay on top of it somehow the whole way. We wow. all wear a lot of hats here at Death Wish Coffee. Uh, there's only 30 um, employees who work for the company right now. When we won the Super Bowl commercial, I think there was 12. Yeah. Um, wow. And uh, uh, we do work with some third party, you know, um, packers, roasters, fulfillment centers, that kind of stuff to obviously fulfill what we the, the growth that we've had. 
Um, but it, like like Dustin said, like Mike really prides himself on putting the right team together that can do lots of different things. And we like we have our hands in a lot of in a lot of aspects of this company. And it's easy when you work for a company that you believe in. You know, it's like I, I, I always say this and I'm not bad mouthing this, but it's not like working for Folgers where they're a corporation and they're owned by a bigger corporation, you know, and I'm sure that people who work for that company might enjoy the, the, the product that they're putting out, but they're doing it for 20 other products, you know, like yes. we all really are behind the brand and the product of Death Wish Coffee. Was yeah, it, well, go ahead. yeah, we don't we, we don't take this for granted here. I think that's one thing that all the team members here have in common. We realize the potential of, of of what we have here at Death Wish, every single one of us, and we, I mean, we really put our all into it. I mean, the, the the team here is very strong, very dedicated, and very, very, very motivated. So, you know, they say where where there's a will, there's a way. You know, and we we keep on finding our way. Well, that is so true, and I have to admit that I, I definitely saw that passion, Jeff, when I met you just a couple weeks ago at Kennedy Space Center. We were down there. Is amazing. We witnessed the launch of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket carrying your coffee into space for the astronauts. Can you tell us how that came about? Wow. Oh, my gosh. That is a journey that we never even knew we were on. Um, <laughs> as the story goes, I got hired by Deathwish Coffee to create a lot of content for the company, um, audio and video-wise, especially to helm a podcast, our, our Fueled by Deathcast. Mm -hmm. And when I started that um, with Dustin, we started, we, we literally, from episode one, put together a sheet of white whales of people that we just were like, you know, I'd love to have this type of person on the show because it's a, it's a guest based show, you know, every week. Oh, yeah. And at the top of that list, I had written astronaut because I was, I'm, I've been a fan of space my entire life right there with I had space exploration. Yes, I know you are too. And uh, I always wanted to um, have an astronaut, someone that I could talk to. Nice. And through just a simple search on the internet, I found, Nicole Stott, who happens to be the artistic astronaut, the first person to paint in space. Huh. And I sent her an email and I was just like, you have no idea who I am, but like, <laughs> I would love to have you on a show like, thinking that it would never happen. And she Do was like coffee. Yeah. Not only did she <laughs> say yes to being on the show, she's an avid coffee lover and she was born in the area. She was, she's from Albany, New York. Perfect. So it was all serendipity. And we had her on the show last season on episode 18 and we talked about she's she spent over 100 days on the international space station she wow. flew on the space shuttle twice and um she we talked about that we talked about living and working on the space station and she performed a spacewalk as well mm -hmm. and she said that when she came back from the spacewalk the first thing that was in her mind was this man i would love a strong cup of coffee and dustin joked immediately on the podcast and said what would it take to get Deathwish Coffee in space? And she's like, I Good. think that'd be a great idea. And it's on the episode. Dustin goes, "This is well, this is the best ever. You, me, and Jeff will be uh, responsible for putting Deathwish Coffee in space. Like, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't be happier. And we left it at that. We thought that would be it. Mm -hmm. um, we became friends over the last year, talking through a bunch of stuff. And a couple months ago, before this launch, she got a hold of me and said one of her good friends is part of Expedition 56, Serena, who's up there right now. Mm -hmm. um, and she's also an avid coffee drinker. And Nicole wanted to share her favorite coffee with her friend in space. So she put us in contact with the NASA Food Labs, and we developed an instant version of our coffee. And NASA was the best to work with. I've yeah. never worked with a company better than NASA. Wow. Um, so nice, so accommodating, was able to help us so much. They, they, they put 60 of our packs of the instant coffee in their specialized space drink bags on that, on that rocket. And now it's in the International Space Station right now being enjoyed by all the uh, crew members of Expedition 56. See, that is so cool. And I have to bring this up. My wife uh, just joked about it. She said, do you think the astronauts were a little leery about having, you know, hey, we're setting up a death wish? <laughs> I'm sure. I, I mean, like, but but it's not even Leary. From what I've talked to with Nicole and other astronauts that I've gotten the the privilege of talking to, um, they have a set menu up there. You know, like they have the menu that they eat day in and day out. They rotate it like anybody else would throughout the week. So like every week that you're up there, you're basically like, okay, it's Tuesday. It's going to be apple cobbler day, you know, or whatever. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know what you're going to eat. So when they get something that's outside of that norm of that menu, no matter what it is, it's right. like a mini Christmas for them. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to ingest this new thing. Cause you can't just go down to the corner store and you know, go try something new because you're stuck in a space station for months. So, so I, 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 I bet you 
the the name probably threw them, but I'm sure they were pretty excited. To try. Well, once I think it's it, Go ahead, Dustin. In summation, I think the uh, the uh, boredom and uh, excitedness of trying something new outweighs the wariness. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, once they t- try it, they're gonna love it anyway. Now, have they tried it yet? Any any feedback? Any- I have not gotten any feedback yet. Um, I know Nicole is in contact with um, some of the astronauts up there, and uh, the next time I talk to her, I am gonna ask her that um, if she's if she's asked them about the coffee or not. But um, I know um, ever since they got that Dragon capsule, it's not just about the supplies that they got. It's also they got some incredible science experiments um, that we got to see firsthand at mm-hmm. this NASA event, which was really cool. So I know they've been they've been implementing some of those and been, you know, um, dealing with that kind of stuff. So maybe they're saving it. I'm not even sure. But uh, one thing I love, I, Jeff, is that you showed me the uh, the vacuum pack that, that NASA yeah. put together. You guys uh, probably not. But I was because you should sell those on your website. I would totally be down with buying one of those things. I know. So like, cool in looking. that packaging and everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's done. It, I, it's great. so cool. I want to work. I want to definitely work more with NASA. Like I said, I can't say enough good things about NASA Food Labs and NASA in general. Mm -hmm. Um, They were so awesome to work with. I hope that we can maybe develop a product like that at some point. But we will. What's cool is, is this actually um, fast tracked an instant version of our coffee. It was something that was always in the back burner of this company because, you know, we want to caffeinate the world. So every version of coffee is fair game, obviously, for Deathwish Coffee. But it wasn't something that we were 100% like, we need an instant version tomorrow. But now that we've tested it and sent it to space, it's like, well, we definitely should be, we're fast tracking it to be able to be mass produced and then be sold on on our website as well. Now, that is awesome. Now, when I I first tried my uh, very first cup of Deathwish Coffee just a couple weeks ago, and I honestly, I felt like a chemist. It was like mix a wet two and a half tablespoons with six yeah. ounces of water. And I'm sitting there making this perfect concoction and, and I drank it. And I have to say it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, I loved it. I'm going to share that video of my uh, first time trying it. But what would you recommend for people who want to try your coffee for the first time? Is there a certain, you know, should they start with the beans, the ground, the K-cups? What do you think? They they should snort it. <laughs> okay. I haven't tried that. <laughs> um, don't do that. I'm okay. sorry. Don't I mean, the, the, the easy answer, the third wave culture answer is, you know, it, it, whole bean is the best. You, if you're going to get... Um, a coffee that you want to enjoy. You really want to get the whole bean. You want to grind it the the, the minute you're about to, to to brew it. And then whatever brewing method that you like, whether it's a Chemex or a French press or even your drip machine or an aero press, however, however you like to, to brew your coffee, um, the fresh bean is the way to go. But we also make a ground version. We also make a K-cup version. Um, so there's there's many different options that, that you can try Deathwish Coffee, you know, for your first time. Awesome. Now, I'm a huge fan of your Fueled by Deathcast podcast. Thank How you. did that Thank get started? Tell us more about that. Well, uh, Dustin and I were um, podcasting actually for a geek website uh, called Fanboys Inc. Um, for about a year. Huh. And uh, it was very uh, comic books, movies, television, that kind of stuff. And um, uh, we were sponsored by Deathwish Coffee. At that time, Dustin was working um, at Deathwish. And, and uh, I was I was I'd been a cook for about the last twenty years. I was I was cooking at a at a local college, but um, we did this as a hobby and we loved it. Mm-hmm. And that site I, I moved away from, um, and it kind of rebranded itself. And I found myself not podcasting anymore and really wanting to. And because of the work we had done with the company with that podcast, the owner of Deathwish Coffee, Mike Brown, contacted me specifically and was like, "So I hear you're free." I'd love to talk to you about creating a podcast for my company. And I was like blown away because I was like, is that even a thing? And it really isn't. You know, a lot of companies, um, at least at that time, hadn't started it. Some companies are getting into the game now yeah. to do it. Um, and we decided that we didn't want to do a, a podcast about coffee because literally we'd be done in three episodes. You'd, you'd be yep. bored. We'd be bored. There we would. There would be nothing left to talk about. I'd really. learn to hate coffee. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> So we wanted to do, we wanted to really bring it to the brand and something that is an ethos of Deathwish Coffee is that this idea of fueled by death. Um, we we want to fuel your day as Deathwish Coffee. Of course, we want you to wake up and the first thing you do is grind up your Deathwish beans and pour yourself a delicious cup of Deathwish Coffee. That's right. what we want. How we want you to start your day, but we want to be with you for the rest of your day. We want to be your lifestyle brand. We want to be the clothes you wear and the entertainment that you consume. And so the idea of this podcast was born from that was we wanted to talk to people 
in all walks of life, and we've had musicians, entertainers, astronauts, authors, um, athletes, uh, it, you name it, podcasters, all sorts of people on the show. And um, because we are all fueled by death, we're fueled by this idea that we want to leave the world a little different before we inevitably leave it for good. And so each week we have these people on and we ask them what they do, why they do it. And we ask them the same question every week. What fuels you to that. keep doing that thing? Yeah, I think that's fantastic. That is a, such a great program. I just really commend you guys for it. I only have one last question. Uh, so when is Death Wish Coffee going to Mars? Um, as soon as the rest of us are going to Mars. Like uh, <laughs> we we ha recently had um, Dr. Michio Kaku on our show, and we talked about awesome. um, growing coffee on Mars and the implications of doing that once we get colonies there. But I will tell you right now, um, I, as soon as we start sending rockets to Mars with the first rovers and the first things that we're going to send there, uh, we're going to we're going to sneak some coffee on that. But I got to tell you what, let's cross our fingers. I tied a few beans to a bottle rocket today. <laughs> <laughs> I aimed it towards Mars. I think <laughs> I saw off. it from here in Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Yeah. It's that it cool spiral pattern like SpaceX does. It'll, in, it'll make it there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. If Elon Musk can't can shoot a car at Mars and, and hit it. I don't know if your He's bottle rocket's going to He's thinking too big, man. Yeah, He's thinking true. too big. you got to think small. Start, you know, bottle I should, rockets. I should have looked closer. Did Starman have like a Death Wish coffee mug sitting by him in the Tesla? No, no. We're, okay. we're, working, at, we're working on that connection. He we, oh. Yeah, he should have. And then he might have made it. Yeah, he might have made it then. <laughs> that's for sure. Guys, I want to thank you again for sharing just the story of Death Wish Coffee and your podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Much, man. My pleasure. Online Coffee Break. All right. I am having my first cup of Death Wish coffee. I think I mix it right. You have to be very precise because in one cup, there's 492 milligrams of caffeine. So it's like two and a half tablespoons of coffee per six ounces of water. Very precise. Felt like a chemist this morning, which is hard for me in the morning because I'm very, very tired. And it's not a lot of coffee. The mug is only like half full, so I think a lot of water evaporated. So anyway, looks good. Smells good. Here we go. Yeah. That's actually really good. There's nothing in here. It's just black coffee. It's really rich. It doesn't taste bitter. It's nice and smooth. Wow. Pretty good. Good job, Deathwish. Well, that was me after my first Death Wish coffee, and I thought it really was awesome. I really do enjoy it. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about Death Wish, just uh, go to the website, deathwishcoffee.com. I want to thank uh, D-Man and the incredible Jeff for joining me today. I want to thank you, our listeners, for listening today. Uh, again, if you'd like to comment on today's topic, just uh, leave us a comment at our website at onlinecoffeebreak.com or at facebook.com forward slash onlinecoffeebreak. You can also call us at 317-862-4700. Leave us a comment there. We might even share it on the air. If you'd like to follow us on Instagram.com forward slash online coffee break, we would appreciate it. Be sure to rate us or share this episode with your friends. Thanks again for listening today. See you next time. God bless.